This is our Forex blog for January 5th, 2011. And one of the best ways of trading is using our currency meter, finding out which currencies are strong, which ones are weak, and then just simply buying the strong ones versus the weak ones, or selling the weak ones versus strong ones. Today the dollar, or last night and for most of the day, the dollar was strong, as was the yen. The dollar's weekly trend right underneath the real-time strength or weakness is strong. The monthly trend's still down. In a perfect world, you have real-time incredible strength at or above the dotted white line shows an intense strength. And in the perfect world, you have the weekly monthly trend coincide with that. Uh, one of the weaker ones that just um, shifted down after having a very strong uptrend is the Swiss. And at 7 o'clock right here, you can see extreme weakness in the Swiss, and the weekly trend had shifted down. Um, dollar was still strong at that point. It just had um, half an hour before extreme strength. So at 7 o'clock, it makes sense to look to buy the strong dollar versus the weak Swiss. Here's 7 o'clock right here. And as you can see, the market shoots up over 100 pips. And so these tools are very strong in finding some of the best uh, pairs to trade. You can see the daily trends up, the weekly trends up, the monthly trend. Because this thing was down so much, uh, still is red. Uh, but it went sideways pretty much all all day. You know, if you bought this breakout right here, you would have lost on that. If you bought this breakout here and stuck your uh, stop underneath here, you could have got in about an hour before it really broke out, and you would have rode that all the way up. Once it's above the upper containment band, it's usually pretty risky to buy uh, above here. But any any time a fib level gets broken and the market comes down and can't break it, it's a pretty decent trade. If you had a tick chart up, you could you know get in the trade right here, risk only 10 pips and you know quickly uh, quickly get out if the trade was wrong uh, because this one had incredible strength uh, and if you ever do break the rule of not buying above the upper containment band be very quick to move your stop to break even and when it went sideways here at the previous week's high I would have got out of the whole trade it's way above the upper containment band and at that point as soon as the statistical strength disappears you might even look for a counter trend trade here because it's very likely to come all the way down to 9600 or even 9550 where the hourly moving average is likely to be. Another one that became weak around 8 was the yen. I don't typically trade the yen too often but if one is incredibly weak and the other one's strong and the weekly trends are both in the direction as you can see the dollar's strong and the yen has a weekly trend that's down and monthly trends down at 8 o'clock uh, you want to look to buy the dollar yen. Now here's 8 o'clock and this thing just absolutely exploded up too. About a 100 pip move. You almost never get 100 pip moves in the dollar yen. You, when you see these fib levels here, that's one of the reasons why it was kind of choppy. You have the hourly moving average and the weekly pivot level underneath you, and you know the weekly trend had shifted from down to slightly up, down, up. Once it breaks above a fib level, most of the time it goes to the next one if it's within eyesight. Uh, so you had a pretty good chance of making 35, 40 pips while risking only 10. That's a pretty high probability trade. Let's just quickly go through the rest of the currencies now that we looked at the currency meter to find the strongest and weakest pairs. Euro dollar. This currency has a daily, weekly, and monthly trend that's down. It was underneath the hourly. It broken out underneath the previous day's low. And we had a narrow range pattern. So you might have went short here with your stop right above the previous day's high. And, you know, in all probability, most of us would have got out of here at the FIB level because there wasn't that much weakness. When the market rallied back up, it couldn't go higher and so when after this sideways breakout you might have went short again here and you want to get out near the next fib level because again it wasn't that weak and most of us including myself may not have sold this uh, move here but if you did on a scalping basis always draw your fibs off the last wave and consider getting out at the first or second fib target I wouldn't have held on for this additional 25 pip drop if I was in that trade fib levels once broken tend to become resistance if it's breaking on the top side, it tends to become support, like you saw in the uh, dollar Swiss, I believe. Notice how the fibs caused the market to bounce all around in here. The weekly trend was up, so when this came down earlier today without that much weakness, and it broke back above this fib level, you might have wanted to buy here, because you want to trade in the direction of the weekly trend. This would have been your profit target, but it shot right through there and came up to the uh, upper fib level, which also happens to be the weekly pivot. Great place to get out of the trade. And normally you want to buy a pullback. This pulled back about 50 pips. That's usually too much. You know, strong currencies don't pull back that much. Uh, but if you wanted to buy here at the hourly, you might have gotten in that trade. Went up 10, 15 pips, enough to move your stop to break even. And the market's just kind of chopping around. You might have 
got in here again at the fib level because it wasn't that weak at the time but for the most part the market's really chopping around you want to draw your your trend lines on on this and if it would have broken out you would have gone long because the weekly trends up it broke this fib level and the next fib level is about 50 pips below it so why not take a shot risking 5 10 pips 12 pips max to have a good shot of 50 pips and you know you would have got out of half your trade here and then at the trading zone down here and get out of the second half anytime you see an explosive move usually there's a little bit of a pullback here you have one right here you might have gone short right there because it's right at the lower containment band if it's way underneath or way above usually you want to avoid those trades uh, you know with a few exceptions if a currency has been going down for three four five six months and this is the first move up and it has incredible strength then you might want to break the rules like you saw in the dollar dollar swiss here notice uh, this was down on the daily chart way too much, exploded up, pulled back a little bit. It is pretty significantly above uh, the upper containment band. So depending on my day, if I was up a lot, I'd take the trade. If it was my first trade of the day, I probably would not because it's a riskier trade, maybe 40% likely to work. Dollar CAD, the weekly and monthly trends down. So you might have sold the FIB here and here. Uh, didn't really lead to anything. Uh, once, If the weekly trends down and the market's having trouble going up or it's going up without that much strength, Notice upper containment band, counter trend sell signals. Um, usually I'd, I don't sell here uh, if the market's trying to work its way up. But once it breaks down underneath this FIB level, because it barely made higher highs, uh, I'd go short you know, somewhere around the um, 10010 area. And you know the trade's going to work once it breaks underneath the hourly right here. Notice the real-time trend color's not that weak, uh, so I would have got out of the trade right here. Anytime you see this kind of weakness, it's called our trend explosion system. You usually want to sell the next... Uh, retracement back up and if your trend line doesn't get broken by normal means and instead go sideways just wait for it to break underneath the low so you'd sell right here around 71 stop up here around 82 and most of the time when the market's underneath the lower containment band and the market's momentum is slowing you want to get the heck out of the trade so here's your fib targets it's way down here uh, you get a trend reversal triangle which usually is the end of most moves especially if the statistical weakness isn't that much so you would have got out of the trade somewhere around here uh, but still a decent uh, 30 pip uh, trade on that pair. Australian dollar has a monthly trend that's up, the weekly trend's extremely down. Broke underneath the previous day's low. Uh, last night you might have gotten into a trade here with a loss, uh, here with a small 10 15 pip profit. Came back up again here. I probably wouldn't have sold there because that was the most strength it had in hours. Um, but once the market's kind of chopping around and it's showing you that it's not making higher highs, you have a flat bottom wedge pattern right here. Uh, if it broke out after hitting a trend line multiple times, if it breaks out, it's usually a pretty good trade. Um, this one's right near a FIB level right here, so it's pretty risky selling it at or below the lower containment band, especially since it didn't have much weakness all day. Uh, but you could have scalped this and made 5 or 10 pips a few times today. New Zealand dollar trend was down, came back up to the hourly. Had a lot, pretty decent strength right here, but at the second touch, it had about 40% less. Pretty decent trade here. The FIB level, 15 pips away is your profit target. You risk 6 or 7 to make 15. Uh, and again, y you know, when it breaks through the FIB level, if it's already at or near or underneath the lower FIB level or lower containment band, it's usually not, not that much upside. And this one didn't really have that much intensity today. Most of us probably would have avoided that one. Eurian, the daily, weekly, and monthly trends down. Had a lot of intense uh, weakness last night, so you might have sold here and here. Uh, it's going down to the lower containment band weekly pivot without that much weakness. I usually don't like to buy currencies where the weekly trends down, but this is a perfect example of how a trend line being hit multiple times, you know, two, three times when it breaks. Uh, you know, this was your profit target, second profit target, third profit target. Uh, and it just shot through your first and second profit target and get out right here with a very decent 50 plus pip win while risking maybe 15 pips. Uh, so trend line breaks are a great uh, method of trading. I don't go over it in class as much as I should. Uh, I plan to uh, do that more and especially in the upcoming live trading room we're going to call those trades out. Here the weekly trend is up and it's above the hourly. Once it breaks above the hourly it comes down. It's a pretty decent trade. It only went up about 15-20 pips and you can see you know it went up with the trend uh, intensity red that's always a bad sign so you want to get out with a small profit here and it pretty much stayed above the hourly once it broke from underneath to above the weekly trends up and so this is a pretty much a no-brainer this is your profit target um, and it's likely to stall here once it shoots through there there's your next profit target your next profit target and up here 
So, you know, this anytime it goes above the upper containment band, the first sign of it slowing down, hitting any of these levels and going sideways or pulling back, you want to get out of the trade. So you're never going to catch every pip, but you might have got out here at 90. You're in this trade here at 10. That's an 80 pip move. Uh, and look at the explosive nature of this. Uh, you might have bought this little pullback here on a scalp basis, and this appears to be an Elliott two-wave fib pullback trade. Uh, not quite. This wave down right here, if it had pulled back a little bit more down here to 44, it did go down to about 51, uh, it would have been an Elliott two-wave fib pullback, but it wasn't. But, you know, anytime it's right at or near the fib level, in these resistance areas, once broken, becomes support. Comes down, there's almost no weakness. You might have given this another shot. Quick, easy, 30 to 40 pip move. Anytime you have currencies st stuck between two fib levels, you usually don't want to trade them until they break out. Uh, we had a lot of trading zone likely resistance areas above, so I don't know if I would have taken this one, but the first sign of it stalling, I would have got out. Uh, and again, look at the explosive nature of this. Uh, you know, anytime you have plus 20 strength, oftentimes they continue. Uh, I probably would have skipped some of these trades just due to the weekly trend being down. This is another uh, one that didn't have quite as weak weekly trend, stuck between two fib levels, breaks out right here, the next resistance area is up here and here and here, and that was a pretty decent 40, 50 pip move. We already went over the dollar yen, and last but not least, the CAD yen. Uh, the weekly trend's up, it's underneath the hourly here, there's lots of resistance areas here, once it breaks above there after going this sideways, in, the, in, in basically a 25 pip range all day, it's very likely to trend, and this thing just took off and went up 175 pips. Amazing trade. Um, I don't think most of us uh, would want to buy it this far above the upper containment band. It's about 75 pips above the upper containment band. The most I ever take a chance on buying usually is no more than 30 pips above here.